Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more adoption videos from the past. <laughs> so today is January, January, February 10th, 2019. Um, and I am in the process of adopting a little girl with Down syndrome from Bulgaria. Um, so, updates. <laughs> Taylor. Um, this is my dog, Taylor. Um, make sure you subscribe for more updates because I'm at this point in my journey. It is done, whether that means I have a daughter and we've passed court, or if that means everything has fallen apart. We're going to aim for the court and have a daughter. <laughs> um, so on last Friday, I got an email from my social worker with my home study draft completed. And so I read over it right away. There was just a couple spelling mistakes. Um, my name <laughs> was spelled wrong a couple times. Um, so yeah, so anyway, a couple little things that um, I emailed back to have her correct. Everything was really similar to my last home study. Um, for those that don't know, I originally, well, I originally had a home study done for private adoption. Then I had a home study done for India. Um, and unfortunately, I was not able to proceed with that, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, so yeah, so this was my third home study. And so anyway, it, this one was really similar to my India one because my India one was approved um, in the summer from the government. Not No, not even October. I got government approval in October for it. So not that long. So a lot of it was just like literally copy and paste for some sections. For other parts, she just reworded it. Um, the only updates really were the fact that I had surgery this summer and some ages updated because I'm older, my parents are older, stuff like that. Um, and my parents are moving here um, from Ontario, whereas when I did my home study the first time, it was like, they might move here, whereas now it's like, they are moving, and they will probably move here before my daughter even gets here, um, and they will hopefully be my primary caregivers for my daughter while I'm at work. Um, so just little things like that. Um, it was approved, so now, um, like, I mean, it's a week, but everything is slow. Everything is so slow. So she sent me an email, I want to say Monday, saying, not, maybe not even Monday, it might have been like Saturday or Sunday, but it was like, here, I've sent this off to the director to sign, so the director signs it, or a director approves it, gives it to me, I sign it, send it back, they send it off to the government, and I was looking at dates for my India one, and my home study was approved before I got the draft, so this one said it was approved, um, so, and I got the copy in the mail, um, like two weeks after I got the draft, so I'm guessing the same thing is roughly going to happen. So I'm I'm hopefully going to get my copy in the mail this week, and then I send it back. And then it took about two weeks after I sent it back for the government to get it. So playing with those timelines right now, I'm looking at um, the end of February. Please don't lick me. Please don't lick me. I hate when you lick my pants and then they're all wet. Um, I'm looking at the end of February for the government to have it in their hands and then um, probably sometime in May to have government approval um, is my current timeline and um, I'm not really concerned anymore about timelines. I'm kind of just rolling with it. So I'm going to continue to roll with it. Um, there was a little girl on Risa's Rainbow, which she probably isn't listed anymore. So I'm not going to link up to her profile or anything like that because by the time you see her, she won't be listed, um, or hopefully isn't listed. Um, and so it was a little girl with Down syndrome. She just turned one. Yes, she just turned one. Super stinking cute. Um, she also has a heart condition, um, which is what's typical for children with Down syndrome. Totally open with that. She is tiny. Tiny. Um, her, her height is pretty much on course. She's a little smaller, um, but her weight, she's very underweight. Um, some of that could be Down syndrome, or some of it is Down syndrome, but going by the Down syndrome chart, she's still under very underweight. Some of that could be heart condition, some of that could be just hospitalization, malnourishment, those kind of things. Anyway, so I, um, first I was like, nope, I'm going to just trust, trust the universe, and if she's available when the time comes, whatever. But then it was like, well, I'm just going to ask about her. So I asked about her to a couple different agencies that had her listed on Rainbow Kids. 
because um, often when they list on Reese's Rainbow, they also list on Rainbow Kids. So I asked a couple different agencies that had her listed um, for more info, and they all said they can't give me any info because I'm Canadian, um, and there is no um, Canadian agency currently working with this non-government organization. So with India, all the children with special needs were put on the exact same list. So any agency could access this list. With Bulgaria, it's different. Each ch file is with a different NGO for, I think it's two months. And they rotate between it. If they haven't found a family in that two months, it goes to a different NGO. Um, so basically, if you see a child listed and your agency does not work with that NGO, you have to wait for them to get that file or your agency has to try to get that file from that NGO over to the NGO that your agency works with. It's very complicated. But anyway, so this little girl is not currently listed with an NGO that my agency can get. Um, my agency straight out said, don't even look at the kids. You, you just wait for a referral. Um, but then talking to someone that has used my agency that adopted a child from a photo listing, she said that just this agency that I'm with prefers us to have dossier done before um, we look at children, um, which makes sense. Um, so if she's still available when my dossier is done, I will ask again, um, hey, can we get her? Um, if not, it is what it is. At this point, it's um, honestly better for me just to wait it out for a referral because um, financially, if I get her right away, money is tighter than if I just wait it out and, but I could have a referral right away anyway. Um, but yeah, so I'm just trying to just go with the flow. If she's available, she's available. If not, she's not. Um, so yeah, so looking at hopefully in July, having approval from Bulgaria and being on the list to be able to accept a referral. Um, could get a referral right away, could have to wait a bit. It'll happen whenever it's supposed to happen, whatever. <laughs> My level of giving a shit right now is just like, let's just get through it. Let's just get through it. Um, I really want to move. <laughs> which can't happen until all this is over, um, but beyond that, um, it's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, I'm not spending any money right now, like, right now, I, with the agency I'm with, they won't take money until the fee is due, so my next fee isn't due until I submit my dossier, which I'll have that money well in advance, and then the next fee isn't due until I get a referral, so things will just happen the way they happen. Um, where was I going? So India. So for those that don't know what happened with India, here is a quick update on that because, and I also want to update on something else too, because I, even though this is very in the past for you guys, I still feel like I want to keep you guys updated on other stuff. Um, so the agency that I was working with for India had their license not renewed um, in June, end of June of 2018. They failed to tell me that. Um, they registered me, which was invalid. They kept telling everyone everything was fine, that they were going to get it back. Um, and so, like, someone I know that I've been talking to, she had applied in May of 2018 for CARA approval, for registration with India. It used to take two weeks. Then it got longer and longer and longer. Because of all this licensing issues, India was like, well, your registration is valid because um, because of the fact that you were registered before they lost their license. Um, but she's still waiting for approval. And the, the one she had said, when I had found all this out, this was like November. So she's still waiting and waiting and waiting. And um, when I had talked to my agents, that agency in October, they said, we can still get... Um, register you with India. We can still get a referral for you. We can still do all that. The only thing we can't do is court and we'll have our license back by then. Oh, my battery's going to die. Um, I'm going to plug it in. Sorry about that. Um, so they said to me, we can do everything except for court. And now I'm finding out that they can't do anything. So there are so many people waiting for care approval. They're waiting for referrals. They're waiting. They have a referral and they're waiting for paperwork to be done. And because my agency doesn't, my India agency, my old agency, doesn't have a valid license, nothing is happening for these people. And originally they told me court, they were going to court December 20th, 
and that's when they told me, oh, just just give us till the 20th and we'll we'll get our license back. Well, apparently Kara isn't showing up for court dates. Um, so yeah. So then um, I backed out well before that because I was tired of them lying to me and being like everything is fine when everything was clearly not fine with them taking my money and registering me without it being valid. All those things I was just like, nope. I, I cannot put my trust into an agency that is lying and withholding information and giving half truths. Um, so that's when I switched to Bulgaria because for me to switch to another India agency was way too expensive. It was actually cheaper for me to restart with Bulgaria than to deal with in another India agency. And also with India right now, everything's just a mess. Um, I hate to say it, but there's a whole lot of corruption going on. Um, but that's international adoption for some countries. So anyway, Bulgaria is a much stable program and all that stuff. Um, so then they last I heard they were having a court date February 5th. Um, I shouldn't say last I heard. The last court date I heard was they were having on February 5th, and Kara didn't show up again. Um, so now their next court date, which the judge said will be the final one, is like March, I want to say 20th. And um, it's funny because I was like, okay, well, March 20th comes and Kara doesn't show up. Do they automatically get their license back? What happens? And it's like, no one's saying anything. But these poor people have been dragged along like money is sitting in this agency's account being held for things they are gaining interest on this so and clients are just being dragged along um anyway i i am glad i got out when i did i think it's just very frustrating the process with india right now um i was reading something from Reese's rainbow um a few weeks ago that was saying that by 2022, interna international adoption could be done for, for the U.S. Um, because of politics and different policies with immigration policies, with the high cost of fees, for the high cost to run an agency, with BS like this stuff, dealing with other countries and the corruption and all that. And um, the rates for international adoption are just plummeting. And I can totally understand that. And I can see that happening, and I can see that happening for Canada as well. Um, just things get are getting more and more challenging, and more and more frustrating, and more and more expensive. And when things fall apart, you lose money, and it's hard for families to to deal with that. Um, um, I I can't see domestic adoption being any different. Uh, domestic private adoption, because the cost for that is insane. The wait times for that they're birth moms changing their minds um so i i can see honestly adoption becoming not a thing anymore um it really really has plummeted in general um the other thing i wanted to update on was penny so penny is the little girl i was hoping to adopt but i ended up backing out because um, her orphanage was refusing to create a file for her and i just didn't have any fight left in me um which ended up being a good thing when I let her go to begin with because of the fact that I ended up switching countries anyway so I would have let her go. Um, when I let her go the family that was originally going to try to adopt her they stepped back up and were like yes we want to adopt her. Change her mind. So it worked out in terms of that. However, so we started pushing for her file in May. No, April? Might have been April. Um, and the orphanage is still refusing to create a file for her and is still refusing to transfer her to another orphanage that can create a file for her. So this poor little girl is in limbo, this family is trying to fight for her, um, the advocate is trying to get people involved that can legally push the orphanage to create a file for this little girl, um, but just, it's a, it's a process and um, unfortunately I have a feeling that this family um, once they get, I'm not sure where they are in the process. Last I heard they were doing their home study. I have a feeling that once they get CARA approval, once they're approved by India to be able to adopt, um, they're in the States and um, CARA approval is taking bloody forever, forever anywhere you are, but they obviously aren't dealing with the issues with the agency that I, I was having. Um, but I feel like their agency because there was an agency in the U.S., Holt International, had their license revoked, 
And so um, another agency was taking over their clients and I feel like they were either a hold client or they were the, the one that is taking over the clients. Um, so there's some slowdown there. But I have a feeling that once they get CARA approval and they are officially able to get a referral, that there's it's going to be a matter of time before they say, you know what, let's just get a kid off the list that already has a file because it will probably take at least two or three months for them to create a file once all the BS of getting her even to have a file is over. So, I don't know. I I just think it's really sad that families are fighting for kids and they're fighting for kids that nobody else wants and these these orphanages and the government and the politics behind things just make things so hard. Um, it's so stupid. The children should come first. And um, unfortunately this has been common in international adoption everywhere. In India it's not legal for them not to have a file for her. She was abandoned at birth or close to it as a newborn. She was she she should have had a file by now. She just turned four. Um, but unfortunately here um, in India, and I know also China, China's another place that I've seen people be like, hey, there's this kid, I really want them to get a, a file created, but the orphanage won't create a file unless there's a family coming because it's an expensive process and a hard process. I get that. But as soon as a family steps forward, they should be like, here, let's create this file, or let's find a way to create this file. Um, I understand that they can't create files for every single child, especially children that are unlikely to get a home. But if a family steps forward, there should be no question about getting the file done. Um, so anyway, unfortunately I can see this little girl slipping through the cracks of people just losing energy. Um, we pay a lot of money and we put in a lot of time and energy into international adoption. And we can only fight for these kids for so long before we're like, okay, well, fighting for this specific kid versus getting a kid home. And that's what it came for me was just the fact that I want a kid home. I don't, I, I can't focus on a specific kid. Um, so like that little one that I was telling you about that was listed. If I can't get her, I can't get her. I'll get another kid. So at this point, I just need to, to stick out the process and get a child home, regardless of who that child is. And regardless of how long it takes, it just needs to happen. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm, I'm getting tired of the process, but, um, Financially, I can't have it go any faster than it is, and I honestly can't get it to go any faster than it is. Um, it's more of just a waiting game, but um, I feel more okay with the wait um, because I know that I need the finances. And it, before, when I was doing it with India, it was like, okay, if, if stuff came up faster, I could just fundraise. I could find a way. I could borrow money. I could do this, that, the other thing. Um, I can take on more um, sponsorships and stuff like that. But now with not being able to talk about stuff on YouTube without having anything, any ways to earn extra money, um, the financial part's a little more scary because if stuff comes up and I don't have the money for it, I can borrow money from people, but I still have to pay that back. Um, it's not like I can do a push of trying to get money. Um, so anyway, that's kind of my thing. <laughs> kind of just where I'm at right now of... Um, just try and take it one day at a time. So this was a lot longer than usual, but I wanted to update on all those things. Um, hopefully by next week I will have signed my copy and sent off my copy, um, and then shortly after the government will get it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and tomorrow's video will probably be me getting my copy <laughs> and signing it. Um, so I shall see you guys later. Bye, guys.